All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning and happy holidays. Uh, whatever you celebrate, uh, Merry Christmas. If you celebrate Christmas, this is Christmas Eve. Hope everybody is safe and healthy out here. Right? Um, okay. Uh, Chef Mutt Meat has departed us. And, oh yeah, I understand. Man, they're working us like slaves at my job as well. Shout out to Chef Mutt Meat. Has been a member of the channel now for four months. We love you too, Chef. And Chef made a neat video. Shout out to all the content creators. And man, oh man. I felt so special. You know, it's it's powerful. You know, it's all cuddly and, and warm and fuzzy and all that, but really it's a powerful video because um, we're not going anywhere. We're not a flyby channel. You know, our channels are not going anywhere. They will never lose their relevance. So, yeah, very powerful stuff. Our presence is powerful, no doubt. All right, we have uh, Deanna Callie, welcome. Mr. Payne, welcome. Ashar, always. AJ, welcome. Kai, Mr. Walker, let's get into it. Lillian, Paradise, Nathan. This has been a weird week. As you all know, those of you who keep up with the news, it's, it's been a weird week. And uh, primarily in a form of attacks and just dog nuttery in general. And I always like to remind people of the statistics before I get started. Why well, I need to do this more often, okay? And, and, and this is daily statistics daily statistics and they're, they're only statistics for children this doesn't even include adults nearly 7,000 bitten every day you know what's creepy is how many dog attacks take place during these live streams there's a dog bite dog attack what is it like every six seven seconds something crazy like that there are serious mutilations that go down as we sit here talking about it, pleading with these people to get these things out of our community. These attacks take place. And every day, over a thousand children alone need emergency care treatment and about 40 need reconstructive surgery. And we're doing nothing about it. Matter of fact, all we're doing is creating the environment to increase these attacks. Removing breed-specific legislation, bringing dogs into more and more public places. The more attacks we have, and these attacks have been on the rise for the past couple decades, the more attacks we have, the more freedom they give dogs to carry out the attacks, which may be one of the reasons why attacks have increased so much. Most definitely, they've been increasing because of the propaganda that's been put out. The pro-dog propaganda projecting these things as lovable angels from heaven that belong inside your home. Ugh. And sadly, nobody is pointing out this pandemic. Nobody's pointing this out but us. So be it. So be it. Again, 
on this map is 500 dots. 500. You have to double this number of dots to get the number of children who need emergency care treatment every day. Very good reminder. And don't even think, if this is 500 dots, can you imagine what uh, 7,000 dots look like? And this happens on a daily basis? This is an epidemic. The people who say that dog attacks are rare or minor or petty, what a joke, right? What a joke. But that's all a part of this satanic sacrificial cult. That is to deny it. Deny it 100%. And to always be in denial. Not here. Now I want to go over some of these crazy, <laughs> crazy stories that took place this past week. Now first of all, before I get to this, I'm sorry people, I have to follow up on this crazy story. This is the best story that has surfaced. I will say in the past six months, no doubt in the past six months, those monkeys that have been on a killing spree of these worthless mutts, apparently they're saying that it was only carried out by two monkeys. You believe that? Just two, according to reports. Right? Check this out. It's, it's as, as bizarre as, as it can get. Two, two monkeys, monkeys have been captured in a Maharashtra village to report a being involved in the killings of nearly 250, 250 dogs. News agency AI has reported that the killings are set to be an act of revenge of an infant monkey was killed by dogs in the area. Beat Forest Officer Sachi Khan told AI that the two monkeys involved in the killing of many puppies have been captured by a Nagpur Forest Department team. The monkeys will be released in a nearby forest. Locals said that the monkeys have been killing puppies for the last couple of months in the Lagoon village of Beel. As soon as they see a puppy, they will catch it and take it to a hide. The dog would then be thrown from there. The villagers contacted the Nagpur Forest Department after the monkeys attacked some school when children as well created panic. Wow. Wow. So, they have narrowed the perpetrators down to two monkeys. And man, oh man, I'm glad they are not going to kill those monkeys. They said they're going to release them into a local forest. And that's what they should do. That's what they should do because those monkeys were simply acting on instinct as primates. They were acting on instincts. They were doing exactly what humans should be doing. And that's the embarrassing part of it. That's what makes the story so incredible. They're just doing what humans should be doing. Right? In incredible stuff. Nature at its finest. My goodness. Bravo. Bravo to those monkeys. They decided to exterminate dogs. Exterminate them. They would take the dog's puppies. They were trying to make it where once the adult dogs died, there would be no more dogs at all. How genius is that? They were not attacking the adult dogs. No. Take the puppies. Incredible stuff. And I think that, you know, enforces or reinforces my point that these things are so unnatural. I don't see monkeys trying to do that to any other organism on this planet. No way. So nature is against dogs. Like I said, if you were to release dogs into the nature, nature would exterminate them. Without the use of monkeys, dogs simply won't be able to survive. They're incompatible with nature, which is telling. If they're incompatible with nature, how could they be compatible with us, with humans? They're not. Now, somebody did a drive-by on a dog. 
What in the world? In Pennsylvania, somebody pulled up to a dog, shot it, and drove off. Pet dog was shot and killed. Incident took place about 5 p.m. Police report that individuals in a white colored SUV, possibly a Honda Pilot, shot the dog and then fled the scene in an unknown direction. I'm just reporting the news. Just reporting the news, YouTube. Right? Don't try to strike me, say you're supporting shooting dogs, anything like that. No. I just think that is a incredible story. Obviously, this media outlet does as well, which is why they did an article on it. And I wanted to share it with the public. Never heard that done before. People pull up on a mutt and shoot it. Right? Crazy stuff. How about that? This dog nut world is crazy. How many people keep up with the news on a daily basis? Is it? I know a few people do. They keep up because they'll send me emails Uh a lot of emails and it's relevant or recent news a lot of times it's stuff that I've read already but this week this week has been very very crazy okay and this made me mad because I did this I think yesterday I googled dog attack I do this all the time and this popped up, even though there are stories of actual attacks. They decided to give this the spotlight. Tom Holland kept his promise to the boy who saved his sister from a brutal dog attack. Right? I remember uh, the boy jumped in front of the dog and the dog mauled him. You know, he saved his sister, the Marvel comic the actors, you know, gave personal shout outs to the boy. And really, I see this as a way of simply showcasing the actor. It's like a moment of narcissism. You want to put this guy in the spotlight rather than put that story in the spotlight. And that story is not about heroism. It's about the dangers that exist inside the homes in our communities. There should be nothing inside of your home capable of mutilating your kids. It is as simple as that. That is the pink elephant in the room. That should be the first question. Why is there... Look, let's say we have no idea what dogs are, okay? Let's say we have no idea what dogs are. And let's say all we do is we see a bunch of homes. Use your imagination. You've encountered... A mysterious planet and you see all these homes you don't know what's inside the homes you just see a bunch of homes and sometimes the children come out mutilated well obviously you would say whatever is doing that you need to get it out the house <laughs> right but just imagine if these things responsible were being brought into the house by the parents, by the adults. And just imagine if they knew that it was capable of doing that. And they took the chance anyway. I don't care what these people have invented. You are not intelligent. I don't care how many gadgets you've created or anything like that. You are an unintelligent organism period 
Because not even insects are that dumb. Not even insects. Insects are a much more in tune with their natural instincts. And let's not even talk about animals. This is shameful and embarrassing. This man, Tom Holland, and his promise to bring this boy onto the set of some movie of whatever, something like that, is not the highlight of this story. It's not the highlight of any story that involves a child or baby being mutilated. The highlight of the story is what can we do to prevent this from happening in the future? This sick satanic cult, they don't want to deal with that. They don't want to deal with that because they need a constant, a constant influx of blood. They want child sacrifice to be a constant. That's what they want. They get off on it. Some of you think I exaggerate when I say that. I'm not exaggerating. Deep down, these dog nuts get off on kids being mutilated by dogs. No exaggeration. Now, if you disagree, let me show you something. Most of you should know that this is true. Just in case, let me show you something. Tell me, what is the purpose of this? What's the purpose? What type of pleasure do you as the adult get out of doing this? Out of sitting a toddler down with a dog and then walking away. They're getting off on the possibility of an attack. You see, they would not find pleasure in this if rather than a dog, this was a rabbit. If it were an animal that did not attack, that was truly harmless, they would find no excitement in this. The only reason they love stuff like this is because the risk is there. The possibility is there. And it's all up to the dog whether or not it happens. They love that. They love it. And if the dog doesn't attack, they view that as a greater display of love than the love shared between two humans. 100%. You know, that is the behavior of a dog-worshipping cult. A sick, satanic, dog-worshipping cult that has in its rituals, the sacrifice of kids and babies, non-stop. See, they love this. You see, they get off on this. See how the child is uh, manipulating the dog? See, stuff like this increases the chances of the dog attacking the child. But because this child does not get attacked, that excites these dog nuts even more. They love it even more. It, they get a high off of stuff like this. They truly do get an adrenaline rush. And I know this sounds weird to a lot of people, but this is how Satanists behave. The population has been brainwashed to carry out Satanic rituals. That's all this dog nut culture is. You can see the boy is even tired of the dog. And these people, and look at the stuff they're writing. God doesn't make mistakes. You're telling me this is not worship? 
This is dog worship. How on earth does a phrase like that fit in to what you're looking at? This is sickening stuff. But worst of all, look how many views it has. 56 million. 564,381 views. 56 million. How could such a video get that many views? It's because these six satanic dog nuts get off when they see the possibility of bloodshed. They get off when the child is in danger, left alone with a dog. The bigger and more dangerous the dog, the more excited they are. I'm, I do not exaggerate when I talk about these satanic dog nuts. They get off on this. Man, and it, it feels weird to just point this out, to be honest with you. It feels creepy. It creeps me out just to point this out and explain it. Yes. I mean, I mean this is a, a level of insanity that is hard to compare. It's hard to compare with anything else. Right? Shout out to Retro Reviews. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Gene in the building. Callie in the building. So, yeah, that made me mad. I don't want to see stuff like this. If we're going to talk about that story, let's talk about why in the world is there something inside of the homes of families that is capable and willing to mutilate kids and babies. And whatever it is, don't try to argue to me that it belongs in there. Don't you dare try to argue that it should not be removed from that home. You deserve a slap if you even think about trying to argue that these things have a just viable place in our homes. Um, something else happened, went down this past week. A boy died after being attacked by a mutt on the Gold Coast. Those who don't know, that's in Australia. The boy and his grandmother, they were playing with the dog in the backyard. And the dog attacked the boy. Now, this is important. This is not just, none of these stories is just another story. It's the accumulation of stories like this that really make our case rock solid. Had you seen the boy playing with the dog, dog nuts would be filled with joy and say, look at how good this dog is. This dog loves this boy. This dog would protect this boy with its life. That is what these dog nuts would say had they, and this is the dog, had they seen, especially seeing that this is a bully breed, like I said, the bigger, the more dangerous the dog, the more excited these dog nuts become. Y'all see the thumbnail to this video. I mean that. I'm, I'm choosing these thumbnails deliberately. They would have been filled with, oh, look at the good boy. See? See, uh, these are all rumors and myths about pit bulls being dangerous. Oh, look at this display of love. And this same bully breed that was playing with this child suddenly killed the child. Suddenly killed the child. So, these things are ticking time bombs. Like the doctor said. I think I shared that in the most recent stream. Ticking time bombs, waiting for the right opportunity to go off. And these people gamble. They know it. They know it. All these dog nuts, they know that. 
fully aware of it, they take the chance anyways, which is why they're all guilty, and they all should be arrested and thrown in prison. Because based on the laws we have currently, that's child endangerment. You have gone above and beyond just creating a hazardous environment. I mean, you've created the most hazardous, most dangerous possible environment anybody could ever imagine. You couldn't even write this stuff. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Father admits dog attack death charge over killing of 12 day old baby. Now, before I get to this, before I get to, why are we saving these? Why are we trying to save these things? What is this? How many stories do like this do we need? Now, they gave the name of the baby right here Elon Jonas was mauled to death by a child and at the end they include the dog's name see that the dog named Teddy has since been destroyed they do that on purpose that's their way of humanizing the dog that's their way of projecting this as a freak accident. Because no way would an adult human simply kill a baby. That was just a very rare freak accident. Huh? Like I said, it's criminal in my opinion to include the name of a dog in an article about that dog killing a baby or child. That's criminal. All this humanizing dogs... People should be aware of it, and that should be thrown out of the window, at least during articles where they're talking about the death of a child at the, at the mouth, the teeth of a dog. It's criminal. Criminal and sick. Very disrespectful. Satanic. Let's call it what it is. This is devilish. Now, there were a few people who brought this up, and I had already read about it. This man, this 55-year-old man, now, this is how it was initially reported. Yeah, I want to show y'all this, and this was the, the yesterday. This is how it was initially reported, at least by the mirror. Man, 55 mauled and pronounced dead at the scene after a brutal dog attack. Right? It has not been revealed what type of dog was involved. Man has died after being attacked by a dog in the village on the outskirts of Dundee. And a continuation or a more detailed article surfaced today. Man killed by dog died doing what he loved. This happened at a kennel. Right? He was killed by one of the dogs that he saved. In that article, they wrote this. Friends have paid tribute to a hero, father of five who was killed by an abused dog that he was caring for. Notice how they said it was an abused dog that killed him. As we all know, that's by design. That's by design. They did that to protect the dog. They worked tooth and nail to protect the image of dogs at all times. Now, this makes it even... Okay, let's say it was an abused mutt. Okay? Why would it attack him? In this article, they're talking about how, how dogs loved him. How he would take in any dog, no matter how vicious, and try to rehabilitate the dog. Matter of fact, they specialized 
and rescuing bully breeds. Right? They focused on dogs that were banned, mainly those pit bulls, the bully breeds. So how can you say that, or how can you blame the dog being abused? This man wasn't abusing him. This is someone who was being nice, giving the dogs food and shelter. What possible reason could the mutt have to attack him, of all people? See, they shot themselves in the foot with this article. Trying to protect the dog by saying, oh, it was an abused dog. It attacked him because it was abused. Well, it wasn't being abused by him. You know, if I'm being beaten up and then somebody chases off the guys who have beat me up and starts to heal my wounds and treat me and, you know, treat me friendly, I'm going to be even more thankful and friendly to the person who helped me than I would be had they just came out of the out of nowhere and helped me for no reason. So this idea that a dog is excused simply because it was abused, I think is irrelevant. And I think it makes the situation look even worse. Okay, Mutt, you was abused. So you attack somebody who is helping you and feeding you? Makes no sense. And these people want to humanize dogs so much. Okay, let's humanize them. This is a very inhumane thing to do. Is it not? Don't try to hide behind the fact that it's a dog now. Well, it's just a dog. It doesn't know you better. No, you don't get to do that. You don't get to humanize them. And, and when it's convenient, say that they are completely not human. And really, it, I don't care if it is an animal. If it's too dumb to understand when a person is helping them rather than harming them, then it doesn't deserve to be saved. And why would I waste my time helping a creature that's not even aware that I'm helping it? I mean, you talk about completely doing something in vain and wasting your time. And they, these things, they are that brain dead where they just, they don't, they don't even care that you're feeding them. All they care about is getting the food in their mouth. They cannot be thankful. They're not, they don't have enough intelligence to be thankful, to be appreciative. They're not even aware when people are being friendly and kind to them. So why waste your time doing it and then claim that you're some type of morally superior person? No, I'd rather help someone who's aware that I'm helping them. Right? I'd rather function like a human being. I enjoy humanity. I don't enjoy dogs, the mind of dogs that have no soul, no feelings, no emotion, no sense of being thankful, no ability to be remorseful. Why would you even want, why would you even find pleasure in helping something like that? Man, I love it. Shout out to all the content creators this information that we're putting out here, this is like a blessing to the planet itself. Finally, we got people out here putting this type of perspective, shining light on this lunacy the way that we are, finally. And man, it is a, it is a rush. What a rush. Crazy. And again, this stuff all happened this week. Like I said, it's a very weird week, man. Also, this week, Pitbull attacks five-year-old Columbia girl, and they placed this worthless mutt in quarantine. 
didn't put it down, they put it in quarantine. Once again, the girl was playing in her front yard when she reached out to pet the dog and was attacked, leaving a large, ga large gash in her arm. Now check this. Animal Care says an initial investigation showed that the pit bull was adequately fenced into the owner's yard. So guess what? No charges. The dog is not going to be put down. It's going to be released back into the public. And now, the mother of the uh, girl who was attacked. Now, what I assume happened, it was just a fence there separating the, uh, the properties. Right? It's the neighbor's dog. And the child, I guess, you know, went up to the dog, tried to pet the dog or whatever. No matter what the situation is, the, de the details of the situation, it was the adult's fault. It was the fault of the parents for having that mutt in our society, period, period, period. But the mother of the child said, so to tell me that you're waiting on another attack, which may be to my family, or to one of my other grandkids, okay, this was the grandmother, excuse me, is just ridiculous. When asked if they felt the steps taken in this case were sufficient, Animal Care said they were. They added that the residents seeking to update or change policies surrounding dangerous or vicious dogs should contact their council representatives. Right, and that's what we need to do. So she's upset that they're going to just let this dog free. It's crazy. And it's because of those laws that we've gone over here several times, these investigation laws. Uh, if a vicious dog has proven to be vicious, now this is the grandmother talking, then there's no need to wait for a second traumatic event to happen. People, that's common sense. But this free bite rule and the nature of their investigations is such where these mutts can get off scot-free attack like this say so each of these incidents should be looked at on its face for what they are and that dog should not be in that community because none of us could sleep at night we're hoping that she's able to get over this incident because a lot of times you have a traumatic injury, you may never completely recover. The uh, dog's owner received two citations. Additionally, the pit bull was placed 10-day quarantine. Now look at this. After this time, the dog will be allowed to roam free after the 10 days. In this case, they're saying that the dog was released because it was at the time on a leash. At the time of the attack, they're saying that the dog was on a leash and that the dog was on its property when the attack happened. And that's why nothing's going to happen to the dog. Even though the dog has already proven that it's dangerous. This is according to their own philosophy. But they're saying that the conditions surrounding the attack, the fact the dog was on its property unleashed, protects the dog from being put down. Perfect example of how these laws give these dogs the green light. It gives them the best opportunities possible to attack and get away with it, to go on to continue to attack. Now, I agree with the grandmother here. What if next week this dog actually kills someone's child? How can you not reflect back on this incident and think to yourself, well, we should have done something then. The dog had already proved that it was vicious, but because of these stupid laws we got in place, it wasn't put down. 
So, yeah. Perfect example of how these laws are failing us. They're failing us. I mean, they're, they're against us, these laws, period. Totally against us. Shout out to Vox in the super chat. What in the world? Man, oh man. Let me show y'all something here. Let me show y'all something what else surfaced this week. I don't know how much proof lawmakers need to ban these things. But uh, I have a never-ending supply, man. <laughs> here, let me share my screen here. Okay. Now this was just uh, uploaded December 21st. An Oklahoma officer was brutally attacked by a dog while making an arrest. According to Sequoia County Sheriff's Office, the deputy was investigating a runaway child when the incident all happened. So we do want to warn you, though, the image we're about to show you uh, could be disturbing. Uh, this photo was shared on Facebook by the Sheriff's Office. The dog owner was arrested and the dog was put in quarantine. So, the uh, creature responsible for this injury on this grown man police officer, a man who's trained in combat, the creature responsible for this is said to be the best friend of children, is promoted as the perfect match for a child. And if you have children, the best thing for you to do is to purchase the thing responsible for this attack, bring it in your home, and treat it like a human family member. That's what we're dealing with here. It only sounds ridiculous like that because it's part of a satanic ritual. Telling you, once you keep this in the context that this is Satanism, it's no surprise. Okay, yeah, it makes sense. This is what happens. Here you got a grown man looking pitiful. Got his little pant leg pulled up, blood everywhere. The dog had not had any rabies shots. He has been neutralized. His manhood taken from him. His size and power meant nothing. And you telling me that it's acceptable to set babies and kids in front of the thing responsible for this and take a picture, record a video, and it does that doesn't violate any endangerment laws, really? Like I said, there have been several toys that did not leave injuries even close to being this severe, completely removed from the shelves. But dogs make too much money for these people, and that's why they won't do anything. The effort they put into marketing, into pushing these things onto the population is very sick. What is this? What's the point? What's the point? The point is to get off on the possibility of a sacrifice. And I'm not exaggerating. These people get off on the fact that the dog does not attack the, the baby. That's literally, overtly, that's the highlight. If you look at their comments, you clearly see that that is what they get off on. The fact that the dog could kill the baby at any time and doesn't, they get off on it. 
And you see a lot of attacks happen because they're trying to do stuff like this. Get a stupid photo or a video. And after the attack happened, they'll say, oh, I just stepped away for one minute. Like I said, many of these people, they have the attack on film and they don't turn it over to the authorities because they know it would incriminate them. They don't want to admit that while well, I sat the baby down in front of the dog and so I could get a photo. Oh, OK. Even though, you know what? Nothing would happen to them if they did admit to that because they would still be said to be supervising the situation. Oh, well, OK, this is supervision. That is why these videos don't get taken down. That's why this is not considered endangerment because they're saying that they're currently their supervision. Right. So like I always said, supervision is worthless. The only thing supervision does, it is allows the adult to witness the attack. Is it not? Isn't that all it does? It allows the adult to see the mutilation. Right here, let me give you something to remember for the rest of your life. Let me give you something that's going to burn into your memory and give you nightmares. These people, these adults, have absolutely no ability whatsoever to stop that dog from attacking that baby. And that's exactly why they get off on this. These are a bunch of sick people who have been brainwashed into carrying out satanic rituals of child sacrifice. When and if the dog attacks the baby... It is then their job to protect the dog at all costs. Even if it requires that they lie on the child to protect the dog. Now I shared this in the community section. I wanted to go over it briefly here because it made me mad. At the Humane Society for Hamilton County, there's several pit bulls and pit bull mixes, like Darlene, looking for homes. I can say annually, it's, it's... See, this is the thing I hate. Saying the dog is looking for a home. Dog ain't looking for nothing. Dog don't know what a home is. It has no idea what's going on. All it knows is that you give it food. These people, I tell you. And what's the point? What What's the point in the delusional talk and all the lies? That lets you know that it's immoral, that it's wrong. When they have to lie over and over. That it's deceptive. That they're trying to manipulate you. Looking for homes. I can say annually it's, it's near 50%. Oh, who wouldn't want this thing that's threatening... The camera person. It, it, as soon as they show these things on camera, these things are threatening. Oh, uh, why wouldn't I want to provide a home and food for this thing? You got to be plum out of your mind to love dogs. That's why... The dog nutter culture requires so much propaganda. It requires so much effort from them to project dogs as adorable angels from heaven. It's because it's so the exact opposite. Ports of Pitbull and other dog attacks have led the breed to get a bad reputation. Some cities and towns even banned them. Says said what? Let's let's play that again. Reports of Pitbull and other dog attacks have led the breed to get a bad reputation. Said reports of Pitbull attacks have led to the dogs getting a bad reputation. Reports of Pitbull and other dog attacks have led the breed to get a bad reputation. Huh? Well, yeah. If you go around beating people up as a human, yeah. 
you're going to have a bad reputation. And who's responsible for it? You. The first thing they want to say, oh, you can't blame the dog. I blame the dog and you for bringing it into our territory. Reports of pit bull and other dog attacks have led the breed to get a bad reputation. Some cities and towns even banned. Why would you? Who in the world? You dog nuts. What makes you look at a bloodthirsty, angry beast like this and want to do something for it? What makes you want to care and spend your money for something? After you look at something like this, clearly making threats for no reason. Dogs make random threats. They don't threaten people who take something that they have or anything that violate them in any way. Simply laying eyes on you is enough for dogs to threaten you. What makes you dog nuts feel compelled to take care of these creatures? Doesn't it sound like these dog nuts got brain damage? They're under a spell. Right? It's that Satanism. Cities and towns even banned them. We identified at least three Indiana towns. Kirkland, Fowler, and Oxford. Senator Blake Dorio submitted this bill to prevent those bans. He owns American Bullies and has worked with dogs for years. We don't have bad dog breeds. We have bad dog owners. Okay. We don't have bad dog breeds. We got bad dog owners. Bad dog No, you got both. You got bad dog breeds, and you got people willing to own them. All of the owners are bad. They're all guilty of indeed. They're all of them, and they're all irresponsible. Owning dogs is irresponsible. You will not control the narrative, dog nuts. You will not control the narrative here. My immediate reaction to a bill that would not allow cities and towns to ban specific breeds is that's amazing. If passed, this bill. That's, that's amazing. Well, yeah. Now we're going to have an influx of reports of babies and kids being mutilated. And that's obviously what she's getting off on. That's obviously what she considers to be amazing. Obviously, because nothing else that happens that involves a dog is as important than the attacks. I don't want to hear about amazing because what now you can rub on these dangerous dogs. No, I'm not going to argue that rubbing on dogs is somehow uh, beneficial to humans to the point where we need it to survive and we should ignore the dangers involved. No, you lunatics. These people, look, you know, I'm giving them, I'm, I'm being merciful on them, saying that they're under a spell and brainwashed. Because if they were not, this would be a, a level of stupidity that nobody could wrap their head around. Would not allow cities and towns to ban specific breeds is, that's amazing. What a bunch of lunatics, man. What a bunch of flipping lunatics. If passed, this bill would make it so different cities and towns couldn't prevent dogs like Harley Girl here. Look how she got to hold its face. Keep it, keep it facing her just to make a decent video. Because the stupid brain dead mutt would be fidgeting, looking at the woman, sniffing all over her, jumping up her dress. So she's trying to keep control of this out of control mutant. And yeah, and somehow I'm supposed to feel like I should have these things, like I need these things. Push dogs as if, oh, you need a dog. From moving in, but it would still nasty. I mean licking faces in this COVID era. This woman has removed her mask. The journalist, she has a mask on. This dog nut took her mask off and the dog licks her mouth. And this story surfaced yesterday. Deep in this COVID era, 
where there are variants of viruses floating around, you have this going on. Face licking. People allowing dogs to lick their face. Hmm. You telling me these people are not a huge contributor to the spreading of these viruses? No, I don't think so. I think so. They def most definitely are. Yeah, but it would still allow different communities like HOAs or apartments to have breed-specific restrictions. I firmly believe that that is a property rights issue. 13 investigates identified at least 10 cities and towns with breed-specific regulations. One bans certain breeds from dog parks. Others require owners to get permits and additional liability insurance. It's unclear if this bill will eliminate those rules. But if HB 18 passes, Indiana wouldn't be alone. At least 21 states already have a state law preventing local breed-specific bans or one limiting breed-specific legislation. Doria was fine targeting dangerous animals. There is nothing that says a municipality cannot have a, 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 a nuisance dog ordinance, a dog that, that barks continually, a dog that is overly aggressive. Um, I don't want those dogs out there. It dog that's overly aggressive. You know, the idea should be, if you're going to have a pet, to get a pet that would still be harmless, even when it gets overly aggressive. I mean, if you're going to own pets, those are the only ones that are acceptable. Those are the only ones that should be projected as members of the family. If you're going to do something that weird. Only if when they become overly aggressive, they're still harmless. Okay, you want to pretend like that's your child and let them play with the kids. Okay, that's very weird and nasty and I'm not for that. Very unhygienic. Okay. But it wouldn't be nearly as bad as it is when you consider the fact these are deadly, deadly predators. Um, I don't want those dogs out there. In recent years, the push to ban Look, threat, 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 threaten. Oh, just bark, bark, threaten, threaten. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. That's all this is. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. Kill, kill kill and you dog nuts you look at these demons and fall in love now I know you nasty zoo files do that I'm not talking to you but look I'm gonna deal with you nasty zoo files as well because y'all a huge portion of the dog nut world I know that for a fact but you would have to be sexually attracted to these things to see them to hear them making these threats and to still feel attracted to them you have to be sexually attracted to them and I'm gonna start calling out this nasty sexual attraction more often because I think that's a huge part of why there are so many dog nuts. A massive portion, a massive percentage of these dog nuts are simply zoo files. Simple as that. Bunch of nasty zoo files. Uh, let me change my screen here. These people are giving me a headache here. So yeah, let's hope that that dog ban in Indiana stays in place. Let's hope. Man. Like I said, this sick cult requires a lot of propaganda, brainwashery. And they carry it out every day. And you can see it in these worthless articles that they write. Viral video of dogs' adorable way of 
asking to put on pajamas viewed six million times. Look at how addicted people are to videos like this. They have to have it. They have to watch it. Tens of millions of views. They have to see it. It is because they are under a spell. They have been brainwashed to participate in satanic rituals. And the demonic entities themselves are like a drug to these people. It's like a drug. I think this was Newsweek that published this article at the top. And I read this article and I thought to myself, why would you write an article about this? Woman is grossed out by sharing a bed with her boyfriend's dog. And she asked the internet for advice. So she made a post in a forum asking for advice. Say, hey, you know, my boyfriend sleeps with a dog. I don't like it. She pointed out how the dog will sometimes get in the bed after being outside, after being wet, after it has defecated. She said this in the article. That sometimes this thing is in the bed shortly after it has defecated and it's still wet and stink. What do I do? And the person who wrote this article, what they wanted to do was to ridicule this woman and run to the defense of dogs. Because this is an example of a person waking up out of the spell. When you start to question the obvious, a flipping dog being in your bed, Oh, you, you're going to question a dog in the bed? Oh, this she's starting to wake up. Let me write this article to make her look like an evil person. So what this person did in this article is they shared the comments of the people who agreed with her that it is nasty. But she ended the article with the people who disagree. She wanted you to remember the people who disagree with her. So she saved it for last. It might seem like nothing, but they're very strategic when they do stuff like this. They know what they're doing. They fully, they're fully aware of what they're doing. And they carry out these types of manipulative, deceptive tactics on a daily basis to keep dog nuts brainwashed and to attack anybody who speaks out against dog nuttery. Letting a dog sleep in your bed as dog nuttery on the highest level. And... The idea was, how dare you speak out against dog nuttery? Let me write this article as a warning to anybody else who may think about objecting to a dog sleeping in the bed. You should be ashamed of yourself. Some of the people who disagreed with her, they said, hey, get a bigger bed and stuff like that. Nasty, nasty, nasty. And apparently there are a lot of men who sleep with their dogs. You know, I shouldn't have to tell any of the ladies to not date people like this, but they'll find out the hard way. A woman, this also surfaced yesterday. Okay, this one at the top surfaced today. One at the bottom, woman claims her neighbor poured chili powder along the fence line to keep her dogs away. Now, dogs ingest chili powder to screw them up like real bad, their digestive, digestive system. The thing is, why would a person be pushed to go to that length anyway? 
sound like you're obviously dealing with something that has no business in our society. So it sounds like to me, you got to go around pouring chili powder on the ground, like some type of uh, voodoo uh, uh, magic spell. Keep the dogs away. Keep the bad spirits away. What is this? It, it, it's crazy how people react to dogs and they literally treat dogs like a menace, like the menace that they are. But we never get around to actually doing something about it and removing the threat. All right, shout out to Lala Shopper in the super chat. Ain't that crazy, like crazy weird? <laughs> this woman got to pour chili powder out in the grass to keep the dogs away. My goodness. And this also surfaced. Boy, oh boy. This surfaced eight hours ago. Well, probably about ten hours ago now. Oh, my goodness. My goodness gracious. We heard about the therapy dogs that went out to the school where they had the shooting. This title, Therapy Dog, put smile on people's faces. They took therapy dogs out to where the tornado victims were. Right? I think I mentioned this also in another live stream. But look at here. Look what it says. As tornado victims visited donation and resource sites to get what they needed, the dog was at the gate. Waiting for him. Someone said, personally for me, she is emotionally supportive. Talking about the dog. She is a dog that feels others' emotions. So, I just thought maybe I could bring her here and put some smiles on people's faces. They can love and hug the dog. And she just loves it all. This is after a disaster. After a tornado. How crazy is that? A tornado destroys an entire community. And here come dog nuts with dogs. Talking about it'll help your emotions gonna bring these things around like savior angels after such a disaster people literally died everywhere dead people everywhere and they see that as the perfect opportunity to push dogs I'm telling you eventually there is going to be so much serious backlash against these psychotic, lunatic dog nuts. It, there's going to be a massive backlash eventually. Because these people are going to show up to the wrong site. They're going to run up on the wrong people. And this effort to push dogs onto the population is not going to end well. It's not going to end well for these dog nuts. This, to me, was a sick, very sick story. You're going to get food and whatnot, and they got a dog waiting on you. Screw whoever is allergic. To hell with anybody who's been attacked. We're going to put a dog before all of you. And that's the agenda behind bringing dogs into these libraries, into these schools, into these hospitals. It's a way to expose dogs to people 
who don't own dogs, to people who otherwise would not be exposed to dogs or their dander or their uh, immediate excrement. And all they do is contaminate our air and really just bring down the whole spirit of seriousness. Why do you think that the right thing to do after a disaster like this is to start lying to the victims? That's all this is. The dog nuts show up with lies. Talking about the dog feels other people's emotions. No, it doesn't. You think now is the perfect time to indoctrinate people with lies? It's bad enough you're bringing the dogs there. But you're bringing it based on lies. No, this mutt does not feel no love. It don't think one way or the other about you rubbing on it. It is not appreciative of any of it. It's only doing it for food. And you think, after I have my home destroyed, my family's missing, my car's been destroyed, I don't know what I'm going to do. Your bright idea is to come in my face and lie to me and tell me that an ugly, flipping mutt loves me and can feel my emotions. If you don't get out my face, I wish one of these dog nuts would approach me with a mutt like this after such a disaster. That is so disrespectful. Disrespectful and inhumane. Where is these people's decency? Sense of decency? Boy, oh boy, they prove on a steady basis that they have no connection with human, basic human decency at all. And they swear up and down they are the most morally superior people on the planet. Let's hope as many of them snap out of this as possible. And let's hope that the crusader population multiplies as quickly as possible so that we can rid our society of this filth. Rid our homes and communities of these filthy child predators that are attacking infants, toddlers, and contaminating our air and water. Let's hope many powerful people snap out of it so that they can ban bully breeds and eventually ban all dogs. The perfect and healthiest world for humans is a dog-free world. Dog-free. And we will never be right until we get these things out of our society and exterminate every single one of them. Completely force these things into extinction. That is the most moral thing you could possibly do. Right? If you are a religious person, if you're just a loving person, if you're concerned about humanity, this needs to be at the top of your list. Driving dogs into extinction. These things do not deserve to exist on this planet. They don't benefit anything on the planet. They destroy everything on it. Every environment they enter into, they destroy it. The air, they destroy it. Water, destroy it. Plant life, destroy it. 
they increase people's levels of anxiety. That's why they constantly talk about how dogs reduce your level up. No, they increase it. If you have a room full of calm people, the best way you could excite them is to bring a flipping mutt into the room. If you want to get their nerves on edge, bring a dog into the room. You're not going to talk to me about how it calms people down. Dogs even destroy the mood of every environment they enter into. They destroy the energy, the smell with their stench. Now, you have to deal with the sound of a dog. Breathe. <laughs> You have to deal with the sound of their nasty nails clunking against the floor. Now even sound is contaminated. Water, air, sound. How much more proof do you need that these things deserve to be exterminated? My goodness. And on top of all that, now everybody is at an increased risk of being attacked. That's on top of that. And even without including the attacks, I've heard just about enough. Right up into that, that's enough for me to say, hey, get this thing out of here. Let's hope the world wakes up ASAP. So I'll probably see you all again. I'll definitely see you all again uh, this weekend. I get Monday off. They're uh, pulling us in at my job next week to work. So I'll probably be working uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. But uh, I have something else I want to go over this weekend. Uh, some of them might be random. So be on the lookout. Big shout out to everybody, all the supporters of the family of the uh, channel. And yes, we are a family. These anti-dog channels, we are a family, man. Right? We are networking. This is true social networking. We have connected. We have an agenda. We have doctrine. We have rules. We have statistics. We have the facts. We have logic. Everything is on our side right no matter how you know effective you feel your channel is trust me it is one of the most important channels on YouTube right now 100% right and let's hope we can cause a dent into the stupidity the thick fog of stupidity that lingers over us right now as we continue with this crusade against these worthless mutants and their enabling owners.